Before the video begins, I want to say thank you all for the continued support. Make sure to watch What If Linda Was In Halo 2 Part 2 if you haven't. It's a different timeline including the events of Halo 3 ODST and I personally think that one is more interesting than the original timeline. That being said, I'm gonna work extra hard doing this video to make both timelines seem very interesting. But let's get to the video that you clicked on. Cortana left the in amber clad ready to blow up, which means Delta Halo was destroyed as well as High Cherry. But with the two hour timers she set for it, the flood took advantage. They focused their effort on evacuating and infecting ships. Not just the aliens in High Charity. We'll come back to this. Mission 1. Sierra 117. The mission starts with Chief crashing into Earth, waking up and getting ready, just like in the original. But this time, Linda's the one checking on Chief instead of Johnson. When the Arbiter comes out of invisibility, Chief rushes to him, but Linda grabs his hand to stop him. Chief is not really confused. He figures out the humans and elites must have some sort of treaty and is impressed because Linda must have been the catalyst for it. When the Gravemind sent her and the Arbiter away, they must have become allies, maybe even friends. We still get Johnson saying, Fool. Why do you always jump? One of these days, you're gonna land on something as stubborn as you are. And I don't do bits and pieces. Linda says he has a habit of making everyone underestimate him. It's his thing. The Arbiter chuckles. Linda hands Master Chief an assault rifle. This mission starts off very similar, but when we get to the waterfall, Linda climbs up there and makes her way separated from Chief and the Arbiter. This part is pretty much all the same except random sniper bullets caving the brute's skulls here and there. When we get to the dam, Linda can be seen in the rocks over on the other side. She kills a few of the Banshee Riders, but the Pelican still goes down. After that, we head into the forest with some snipers, well, carbine snipers anyway. Chief gets shot, but the shot is reflected by his shields. The Arbiter says, The Spartan would have seen through their hiding spots. Cortana says to the Chief, Well, they got chummy, huh? Arbiter takes out his sword and cloaks. We continue along the mission and we get to this little bridge where Johnson and his soldiers are passing by. You see a bunch of sniper shots killing all the enemies following Johnson. Linda's further on top of the rocks and she's taking them out to protect Johnson and his crew. Linda meets up with the chief at the down pelican. While she was checking for any dead marines, chief managed to catch up with her. She gestures a hand for him to come over and help her. As they use their Mjolnir armor to push the pelican, a brute sneaks up on them, but a sword cuts right through his chest. Standing behind him is the Arbiter. Linda and Chief finish pushing the Pelican into the water and Linda says, I saw him coming a mile away. The Arbiter just grunts and shakes the brute's blood off his hand. He asks, What were you two doing? And Linda replies, It'll be easier for the Pelicans to airlift it downstream without all the rocks in the way. When they get to the section with the brutes capturing Johnson, Linda starts taking off heads with snipers as Master Chief and the Arbiter push through the bridge. One on top and one on the bottom on this little path here. Chief is taking care of all the ones above and the Arbiter is cutting his way through on the bottom. Suddenly, a Covenant ammo crate goes flying over Chief's head. The Chief then is running at Master Chief with a gravity hammer. Chief starts shooting at it, but it's not slowing down. When from underneath, a sword cuts through the floor right into the Chieftain's foot. Taking advantage of the momentary interruption, Linda shoots through the Chieftain's other leg, blowing out his kneecap. The Chieftain roars in pain and tries to lift his foot from on top of the sword. But as he puts his weight on the other leg, with no knee, he falls backwards. Chief immediately jumps on top of him, lands right on the brute's chest, breaking its ribs, and empties a clip of his assault rifle right into its face. They finish pushing through the bridge, and by the time Chief makes it back out the building, Linda has made her way from the rocks over on this side, by where the skull is. By the time the Phantom gets here, Linda's in position, and between the three of them, the reinforcements stand no chance at all. Mission ends pretty much the same way. Mission 2, Crow's Nest. This mission starts out and generally plays very much the same. When Chief, Linda, and the Arbiter get there, there's no Miranda to greet them though. Instead, I'll leave this one up to you guys. Insert your favorite minor character here. For me, I just chose someone insignificant like Commander Pascal from Halo Glasslands. I'm sure some of you are gonna hate me for calling him insignificant. When the Prophet comes on and Chief says, Does he usually mention me? Linda jokes, How do you know he didn't mean me? Master Chief and the Arbiter go to secure the perimeter. In the meantime, Time, Linda goes to help get the bomb and get it ready. This time, when they get back to the ops center, Chief stays and Linda goes with the Arbiter to rescue the Marines in the barracks. Master Chief has Cortana program the bomb this time, while she coordinates the evacuation with the rest of the Marines based on where Linda and Arbiter are. Once the Marines are rescued and evacuated, Linda and the Arbiter head back to the ops center. When they get there, Master Chief is reloading, surrounded by a pile of dead brutes. 
together, they all head down to the service elevator to escape the blast. This place will become your tomb. Mission 3, Savo Highway. The mission is... Yep, you guessed it, pretty much the same again. The only difference here is between the three of them, they clear out everything so much faster, meaning less humans die and less are injured. With the benefit of time, when the mission ends, usually Keys says something along the lines of Fully uncovered, sir. Instead, it's just, they're almost finished digging. So the Forerunner ship is still not done being dug up, as opposed to the original, where it's basically done. Mission 4, The Storm. Honestly, this mission is very much the same as well, save for the Arbiter and Linda are bonding a little bit more. These two ghosts near the beginning of the mission, the Arbiter hops on one and Linda tells, the Arbiter hops on one and tells Linda, Come along, Spartan. I'll show you how to use one. Linda ends up impressing the Arbiter with her ghost riding skills. After over 20 years of fighting the Covenant, she might have been better at driving their vehicles than they were. Another thing that changes is they are moving through the mission really fast, so the Scarab doesn't catch up to them until they get to the anti-air gun. So the Chief, Linda, and the Arbiter get sandwiched between the Scarab and the forces of the AA gun. They hatch a plan, the Arbiter will cloak while Linda snipes as many as she can. It will draw their fire to her while Master Chief finds a way to damage the Scarab's legs. Chief backtracks slightly to go get the hammer of the Brute Chieftain and uses it to damage one of the legs. While Linda is sniping the area at the AA gun, the Arbiter manages to get in close and kill the rest. He uses the AA gun to shoot the Scarab. The Scarab shoots it back and they end up pretty much taking each other out. Well, at least the top part of the Scarab. Now with the AA gun down, the three of them put forward all their effort to destroy the Scarab, but the Arbiter stops them. He has a better idea. While Lord Hood plans to attack the Prophet's ships with his own ships, the Arbiter could pilot the Scarab and shoot at one or more of the ships Sure, the top part of the A gun and the Scarab is gone, but there's a bunch of hills here, so he can sort of angle the Scarab upwards. That way he can help the humans crack the Covenant's shields. Instead of the Covenant finishing digging up the vessel to the Ark in the last mission, they had just finished here. So once they were done, they could fight back against the human ships and the Scarab without hesitation. Meanwhile, the Prophet is trying really hard to ignore the humans and just get going on the Forerunner ship. But in the middle of the fighting, the Flood arrives. This time, they don't crash land on Earth. They crash into the biggest Covenant ship. They take it down. As both ships are coming down, they end up landing roughly in the same area as the infested ship does in the original. Mission 5, Floodgate. The mission is essentially the same, kinda. They aren't trying to get to Cortana though. Well, the Cortana message anyway, since Cortana didn't have to stay on high charity this time. So instead of diving deeper into the ship, they work on saving marines, and just the humans in general. In the meantime, the Covenant has disengaged the elites as the Prophet has activated the portal. The remaining Covenant ships dip into the portal and head to the Ark. The elites use this as an opportunity to glass the area. This time though, even if Linda and Chief and Arbiter contain the flood better, the elites glass the entirety of Africa, not just half a continent. Having glassed the entire continent, Admiral Hood is extremely mad at the shipmaster. There's no Miranda here to calm Admiral Hood down, although this time Cortana takes that role. She tells Lord Hood they have to go through the portal to stop the Prophet. Lord Hood finally relents when Cortana says the Prophet could activate the rings. He says the Chief can go, but they need Linda here on Earth, as the rest of the Covenant from everywhere in the galaxy will be heading there, and the portal is the most obvious thing for them to try to do and go to Earth. Mission 6, The Ark. Linda decides to disobey orders, as the fight against the Covenant is all but finished. The UNSC is hanging on by a thread, considering the battle for Earth is taking a huge toll on them. There's nothing more for Linda to do on Earth while the Prophet could activate the rings and kill everyone. Chief doesn't say anything, even though he notices Linda is disobeying orders. The forward on to Dawn goes into the portal, and the rest of the beginning goes on the same. The mission starts, and we land on this desert. Linda says to John, you wanna have a little competition? But Master Chief knows he would lose quite readily. He says, next time. Everything is the same for this section. They stop the Covenant from building this AA gun, they head into the cave, and they get to this sandy area on the other side. They take care of everything here, and Chief is the one who takes the rocket launcher. They take the prowlers, Chief driving, the arbiters on the turret, since driving would be kinda hard for him with one arm, and if he has to hold himself with one arm, he won't be able to do much if he's on the sides. Linda, on the other hand, she is on the side while sniping, but once they get up to this little hill, she hops off and she just starts pulling a Legolas here, sniping all the brutes 
students out of their vehicles. The chief and the arbiter push ahead while Linda hops on the prowler the ODSTs following them had taken. The rest is pretty similar. They get to the landing zone where they clear it, then each one of them takes a tank. Chief makes sure Cortana can semi-control the one arbiter is on, not because he doesn't trust them, but because he only has one arm, so Chief wants to make sure Cortana helps him. Once they get here, it's Linda who goes up instead of Chief. Guilty Spark sees Linda as the main reclaimer instead of Master Chief, since she's the one he took with her back to the library in Halo Combat Evolved. Once they get out here for the fight against the Scarab and the Wraiths, this time the Chief and Arbiter have tanks, as well as Linda being all the way up here. She has a field day sniping brutes left and right, all the gunners in the raid turrets, all the random prowlers and ghosts. We even get a scene of brutes trying to hijack the Arbiter's tank. And as the brute pulls the hatch open and rips it off its hinges, Linda caves the brute's skull. Chief and the Arbiter go around this middle structure with both shooting at the scare. They bring it down and Linda drives up and rams the Warthog into it while jumping out. She lands directly inside the Scarab while the Warthog takes out the top part. She easily takes care of the Scarab crew and blows it up. In the meantime, the Chief and Arbiter have pushed their tanks to the bottom of the spire. They make their way up killing everything in their path. Linda starts running up to catch up to them. When they get to the room with all the sleeping grunts, the Brute smells the Arbiter and starts looking for him. While the Spartans are executing the sleeping grunts, the Chief then manages to ambush the one-armed Arbiter. Pinning his arm under its massive weight, Chief runs up to the Brute and tackles him into the floor and headbutts him. The Brute is bleeding from his fractured skull and with the mother of all concussions. He tries to roar but the Arbiter puts his foot hoof, maybe, on the Brute's throat and shoves the sword into his gullet. Chief and the Arbiter exchange nods. Cortana says, I guess you two are friends. The next section is the same but when they get to the map, Chief plugs Cortana into the system and she all but confirms the Ark is building a replacement Halo. Guilty Spark is extremely happy and wants to take off to go find it and oversee its finishing. Linda and the Arbiter notify the Chief that there's a Phantom inbound. The end of the mission plays out the same. No, don't shoot. They mean us no harm. Mission 7 the Covenant. This mission starts out the same, nothing different for the beginning, except Johnson went with the Elites in case they needed a human touch for any of the activations. Because let's face it, the Elites should have thought about that. They can't activate or deactivate anything if it's Reclaimer only. We get Linda to deactivate the shield instead of Chief having to go deal with it, so that happens sooner. The brute reinforcements couldn't stop Linda, but they did manage to pin her down, so either way, the Chief and Arbiter's forces had to go help her. But that's when a fleet of Elite ships Arrive. They aren't just elite ships though, these are flood ships. If you recall at the beginning, the Gravemind had put more effort into getting control of the Shipmaster's forces and ships. The Gravemind had planned to use the fleet to spread the flood to every corner of the galaxy. But since Truth had found the portal and was about to activate the rings, the flood had no choice but to come to the Ark and stop him. But the problem is, the flood had to go to Earth and they may have made a quick little stop, but it was more than enough time to leave flood forces behind. Yes, the flood demolished what was left of the UNSC, with the power of the Covenant ships and the intellect of the Grave Mine. Earth was on its way to becoming an all-you-can-eat buffet for the flood. When Chief looks up and sees just how many ships arrived infested with flood, it becomes evident to everyone that Earth is gone. Realistically, it would have taken some time for the flood to beat Earth, but it doesn't matter, because even if they could defeat the flood and head back to Earth immediately, by the time they got there, it would be over, with morale low, having to fight the brutes and the flood and still make their way to stop truth, things look grim. Since the shield around the facility had dropped, the Covenant saw that this was their last chance. They had to throw everything now and start the great journey. So the two scares we fight at the end of the mission drop now. Team Chief has to fight its way to truth through the flood now. But in the original, the Flood are our enemies here, and 15 minutes later, they want to help us stop Truth. So it doesn't make sense to me. This time though, the Flood has kept Miranda alive. The Gravemind did not infect her back when it took the Ian Amber clad. The Gravemind is smart, and it knew it might need to shut down the Halos. It wanted to digest her so it could get the coordinates to Earth, but it figured that out, converting the elites around the remains of Delta Halo. Chief, Linda, Arbiter, and Johnson don't know that though. They are more worried about the Flood on top of them, and wonder how Truth plans to activate the rings if he's not human. Simple enough, there was plenty of marines from the forward onto Don that landed on the Ark. He had just taken some. Don't argue with me over this, because it was stupid of the Prophet to not capture humans. Relying on the Brutes capturing Johnson, when he knows the Brutes would have probably killed most if not all humans on site? I mean, Truth knows he can't activate anything without them. This time, the Arbiter doesn't go with Guilty Spark to see how much damage was done to the Ark. There's no point. 
the flood came in huge numbers and they want to dismantle the ark, or at least that's what everyone believes. But the grave mine right now is focusing on stopping the prophet from activating the rings. When they get to the spire, the flood is taking down the scarabs. There's a bunch of goo-like mass around the base of the legs, stopping them from moving, and flood are leaping into the air and landing on top, heading inside the scarabs. Cortana thinks it's odd that the flood would be fighting them so hard. After all, they were the only ones who could stop Truth from activating the halos. But Truth has to be alive or else the entirety of the Grave Mind's forces would be here to stop them, and not inside. They see from outside a pulse starting to generate around the citadel, but it shuts down and disperses before it can be sent out into slip space. Up above, the shipmaster's ships are fighting against the Grave Mines, but the battle is clearly one-sided. The forces of the Covenant had been semi-coordinating attacks with the elites, but mostly out of sheer desperation. It's not really a coordinated effort after all if you're just running away from your opponents. It's kind of the ship equivalent of spray and pray. They sneak into the Citadel while the Flood is busy taking down the two scarabs. The Arbiter is really upset because he believes the Flood killed Truth, but when they get inside they find Truth cowering in a corner with a brute spiker and some brute bodies near him. He killed them as they were beginning to turn into Flood, and the Flood had just not gotten to him yet since he took the elevator down to the entrance. So the Arbiter hurries, he stows away his sword, he uses his one arm to lift the Prophet into the air by his throat. While the Arbiter is choking the life out of the Prophet, Chief and Linda look at the screens that are usually playing the Prophet's speech. Instead, this time, they're playing Miranda. She's alive. Well, no. As the video keeps playing, it's her transformation into Flood. The Gravemind makes sure it's slow and painful and grotesque. Seeing that, the Arbiter says he's sorry, we couldn't stop it, but they need to leave and make a plan. The mission ends as we see Chief, Linda, Arbiter, and Johnson hop into a Pelican. 343 Guilty Spark is on board already. This is a Pelican that Johnson brought instead of how Miranda usually brings the pelican in this section. Mission 8 Halo. Mission starts on board the pelican. Cortana is flying it since she can react instantly and the flood are shooting at it. While the elite ships are providing cover for them, they are still heavily outmatched and outnumbered. The pelican has taken some damage so Linda is in the back shooting out at anything that targets them directly. They decide the only way to stop the flood is to light the ring. Then we are agreed. A tactical pulse will completely eradicate the local infestation. I will personally oversee the final preparations. The Arbiter says the Flood must be on Earth, so even if they light the ring here, it won't affect the Flood back there. Guilty Spark says, Not necessarily. If we open the portal, the installation may yet fire and reach the planet on the other side. Cortana says that won't work. The Halo race can't hit anything within slip space, as it's an extra dimensional space. The Monitor says, If timed correctly, we can activate the installation as it crosses the portal to your world. Part of the installation will be firing anything within the limited tactical pulse and the other part will take care of the breakout here. Master Chief asks Cortana, Are you sure it will work? Cortana tells him, I don't know, but it's the only chance we have. He's the expert here. I doubt he could miscalculate anything about his own installation. Johnson is extremely pissed off at this. He doesn't want to kill everything on Earth. Master Chief places a hand on his shoulder and says, We both know what the Flood is capable of. Humanity may survive the end of Earth, but it won't survive the spread of the Flood. Johnson may be mad, but he agrees. After all these years, we still lose Earth. The Chief asks 343 Guilty Spark, how do we light the ring? First, we must uncouple it from the Ark. I will begin creating an activation index. Cortana says, this halo will be exactly the same as the last one? So 343 replies, down to the atom. She says, no need then, I still have the index. 343 begins to turn red. If you light the installation now, it will destroy it. The Arbiter says, if we do not light it, the flood will take over the galaxy. The Chief says, worse. Linda says, the Ark is in interstellar space. The flood will spread beyond into the rest of the universe. Guilty Spark starts to freak out. Unacceptable, unacceptable, absolutely unacceptable. Oracle, the Ark may create a new halo just as it recreated this one. 3 for 3 turns back blue. He pauses for a moment. I suppose you're right, but we must allow the installation to separate far enough from the Ark before we can activate it. Chief tells Cortana to turn them around. They need to go back and separate the halo from the Ark. When the Chief Gang gets to the two Scarabs, they find something horrible, and things are just gonna get much more disgusting and horrible from here on. The Scarabs, there aren't Hunter Worms piloting them anymore. It's all Flood Biomass a corrupted version of the Scarab, looking similar to the Harvester. It kinda defeats the purpose of the Scarab being machine, but in this way, the Flood have rearranged the components on the Scarabs. They have merged both the components and the biomass. The top guns of the Scarab have shifted to the back. Now they can aim straight up and be used sort of like mortar strikes. 
when they land on whatever they shoot at. There's also a thick layer of flood biomass encompassing the scarabs, well, scarab, as it has merged them. Which means anything that tries to get close will have tentacles coming at it. All the turrets along the sides kind of stayed the same, but since now it's one scarab, that just means double the turrets on the sides. The scarab doesn't have direct anti-air because of the way it's reconfigured, but the two I-beams now become one, and it's extremely powerful. Cortana tells them to hang on and prepare for a rough drop. She drops them off barely avoiding the laser beam from the super scarab, but it straight up melts the mountains around. She says she's gotta evade the beam so Chief, Linda, and Arbiter have to kill it. The actual gameplay of the mission starts and as they land on the snow where the two hornets were in the previous mission, the mission starts with a timer, 6 minutes, to blow up the scarab. So we fight our way into the scarab, Arbiter has to cut the tentacles that try to reach out, but he has unlimited sword ammo. Climb into the scarab but the rearrangement of the scarab means you can't blow it up from the back like usual. Instead, the timer stops here. Kind of like how the timer stops in Halo 1 when we are waiting for Foe Hammer to come pick us up. Cortana comes in through the comms and says this new I beam must be much hotter than the original. So instead of finding the power source, overheat it. The heating dispersal unit will be on the bottom where the shield is usually instead. The brutes that were on board were carrying fire grenades. So when we kill the flood brutes, we pick up those and throw them. After overheating it, its eye explodes and the grave mine cries out in anger. A psychic barrage attacking all of them except Linda. See, Chief is the protagonist of Halo. That's why in Halo 4, the librarian kind of like awakens whatever it is, his hidden genomes in him. But in my series, Linda is the protagonist. So, spoiler ahead for what's going to happen in Halo 4, but Linda is the special one here. The Grave Mind has a lot of trouble getting into her mind. The rest of the mission is getting into the Citadel, but we don't go to the top. Instead, we stay on the bottom to detach Halo from the Ark, and we fight our way out. Nothing much to say here, but when we exit the Citadel, Arbiter, Linda and Chief are running, and as the Flood Pureforms are about to land on them, Johnson shoots a Spartan laser at them from the back of the Pelican. Guilty Spark has rallied thousands upon thousands of Sentinels to come help, maybe millions across the Ark, fighting back against the Flood. As soon as the Halo detaches from the Ark, he also says he should be able to activate all Sentinels on the ring to help them. A bunch of the Enforcer Sentinels come out of the Ark, and they escort the Pelican away. Mission 9, Cortana. The mission starts with Chief and his crew heading to the new Halo. They tell the Shipmaster that he must flee because they plan to activate the halo. The shipmaster says he will not run from the infestation. If it isn't stopped here, it will devour everything in its path. They will try to provide some air support and will be their main mode of escape once the ring is activated. But they must hurry or none of them are making it off this ring. So the mission is actually fairly similar. But at first, when their pelican is finally taken down, they land in a relatively safe area and close to the control room. But here, as soon as they get there, it's not just flood raining down on them. The flood are here in force. It's well fortified. On their way there, most of the sentinels died or got destroyed. Just as they're done scaling the spire that leads to the control room, the shadow of intent blows up in the skybox above. The Arbiter starts freaking out for his people and because now they don't have a way off. But the shipmaster comes on the radio. We onboarded the ship. The flood has gained control and we detonated it. Let the infestation have it if it wants it so badly. Our reports indicated that the human vessel was still intact. We shall commandeer it. The Flood did not go take the forward onto Dawn, as it had no one on board, and the Grave Mind didn't want to split his forces even more, when they could come back for it at a later time. Now they have zero air support but the new Halo is sending all its sentinels as it finishes making them. So throughout the journey into the control room, they keep helping. This little part where Johnson is standing is, is where Linda and Johnson will stay, trying to stop as much of the flood as possible from entering the control room. The doors of the control room are already open, the flood is inside, so the Arbiter and Chief have to fight the flood even inside the control room. But remember all these doors that don't open? This time they do, and an Enforcer Sentinel comes out of each one, helping clear the flood slightly. The fight inside the control room is just dozens of these range forms and on the platform leading to the console dozens of tank forms gameplay wise it's one of the most annoying but fun parts of the game you want to challenge yourself it can be near impossible to beat them on legendary you want to have fun normal there you can have some bubble shields and other equipment here to save you after the most difficult fight of their lives and reinforcements have stopped arriving they see linda and johnson coming in they have been pushed back inside and are about to get sandwiched from both sides johnson is bleeding out and relying on guilty spark to help him limp with the help of linda though 
Kyle, they managed to clear out the room enough to have Chief run up to the console and activate the ring with Cortana's help. But much like in the original, everything around them is starting to fall apart. Chief gets separated from the console with falling debris, and as he's trying to make it back to Cortana, there doesn't seem to be any openings. Cortana tells him to leave her, they're running out of time. Linda pulls Chief back, but he's relentless. He doesn't want to let Cortana go, but Cortana tells him, don't be stupid John, we knew this day would come. Live for the life I never got. Realizing that he really can't save her, Chief grabs his weapon and starts running out of the control room, along with Linda and the Arbiter, as well as Johnson being semi-carried by 343. They needed to find a vehicle after all, since the shadow of intent was gone, and sending a vehicle from the forward onto Dawn to go get them would just take way too long. But the monitor says he can take them to the forward onto Dawn. This installation is essentially the same as his first, and the monitor can teleport them, but the ring is incomplete, so the teleportation system does not work 100%. The Arbiter says, John and Linda nod and look at Johnson. They all get teleported really close to the forward onto Dawn, but not on it. The elites had begun preparing the ship to take off. Chief begins to carry Johnson over one shoulder and shoots while the Arbiter and Linda cover them. Although there isn't much flood here, the flood manages to chase them on board the forward onto Dawn. Cortana had been somewhat stalling the Halo firing sequence, but she can't really hold it for much longer. The monitor activates the portal to Earth and the ring starts to move through. Chief and Cortana say goodbye as the ship enters the portal and out of her range. Linda is upset as she had grown to care for Cortana as well. Linda helps carry Johnson to the medbay, but they immediately need to jump to slip space. Since there's still flood on board, Linda needs to head back and help Chief and Arbiter clear them or else they'll just be bringing the flood back. The slip space bubble around the ship will make sure they live, but just before the jump into slip space, they get a look at Earth, completely unrecognizable, covered in grotesque biomass. The ring has pushed almost halfway through the portal and it fires, shaking and exploding into pieces as it fires but it sends a cleansing wave throughout the entire solar system, killing the flood on every colony near Earth, the moon, Mars, so on. The slip space entrance feels the aftershock, thus breaking the forward onto dawn in half, same as in Halo 3's ending. The other half of the ring has also been successful, but also shook itself to pieces, which crash into the arc. Damage, which alongside with what the flood did, will take years to repair. Linda, the Arbiter, and Chief were the only ones on this side of the ship though. Johnson was already in the med bay that was teleported alongside the other side of the ship. They all survived, but each side believes the other didn't. Johnson managed to just barely cling on to life as they made it into slip space. Though all human forces in the solar system are dead and erased, the UNSC lives on. All the colonies outside the range of the ring will manage to carry on and eventually repopulate Earth. And with Johnson alive, he'll be able to tell them exactly what happened. The legendary ending this time is Chief, Linda, and the Arbiter go to sleep in cryopods as the Monitor activates a beacon for the Reclaimers. The Monitor does not stay on the forward on to Dondo. He drifts out and considers making his way back to Earth so he can take the portal back to the Ark and start waiting out the reconstruction of his new Halo. Just as he starts drifting out though, he notices a shield world requiem. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I feel like my creativity really got going halfway through though, because the first two missions, they don't seem like they would have been much different. I hope the ending didn't feel rushed either, as I noticed that the ending was kind of like one page as opposed to a page per mission on the others. If you like it, let me know. Got any thoughts on the video? Let me know in the comments. I love reading what you guys say. I love interacting with all of you. Be on the lookout for what if Linda was in Halo 3 for the separate timeline. I'll be honest, as far as the two timelines go, I like the second one more but after doing this video I'm pretty tired on what I like and I had already started writing for the second video I hope you guys like flood I would appreciate if you guys watch it and let me know which one you like more that way I can know how to focus my storytelling to make a better watching experience for you guys thank you so much for watching be on the lookout for timeline 2 have a great day bye this is not